everybody, this is Alex from the Animal Ambassador Team at the Florida Aquarium. Happy St. Patrick's Day and welcome to our first episode of C-SPAM. Uh, so every weekday at 10 a.m. we're going to be showing you guys some of the things that we're doing around the aquarium and also making some fun videos for you guys and the kiddos at home. Uh, so today we're going to be celebrating St. Patrick's Day with our ring-tailed lemurs. Uh, so we decorated and made them a nice little bar. Um, inside of the glasses they have apple juice since they can't have beer like the rest of us. And then underneath their cups we have hidden some pieces of vegetables and some other good snacks for them. Because uh, this species in the wild will be spending a large amount of their day foraging and trying to find their own food. Uh, so hiding it makes it a little bit more engaging for them. Now, um, I think we're going to go ahead and start letting these guys outside uh, so that they can go ahead and get started. Let them out. Rami, Annie, and Lulu, come on! Lulu comes out first, of course. And then Miss Annie. Come on, Annie. You're blocking the door for Remington. Good job. Rami, come on. So about our two girls while Remy is trying to decide whether he wants to join the party, there he is. Uh, Remy is our only male and he is actually going to be turning 11 tomorrow, uh, is his birthday. And then for the two ladies up on the top, the one on the left is Annie and she is our oldest female. She'll be turning 10 on the 21st. And then the one who is hanging out next to her is actually her daughter. And her name is Lulu, and Lulu actually just turned seven on the 13th. So these guys are gonna take a second to kind of figure out what this table is. They always are a little bit hesitant when we show them something new, just because that is very natural for this species to be cautious, since they do have quite a few predators in Madagascar. So while they're trying to decide whether this juice is as delicious as I think it'll be for them, we'll talk a little bit about their species. So the lemurs are actually a primate species uh, known as the group of prosimians. Uh, prosimian does encompass all 113 different species of lemur, bush babies, and eye eyes. Uh, so basically it's all of the primates that are not monkeys or apes. So these guys do have quite a few adaptations that make them a little bit different from the monkeys that we know and probably are excited about as well. Uh, so one of the big differences with them is actually the way that they communicate. These guys can make over 101 different sounds to communicate with each other. You may actually be able to see or hear um, on the video just a little bit, Lulu is clicking. That's what she does when she's excited or when she's inquisitive. So for these guys, um, they are gonna also use scents to communicate. If you could see on the inside of Remington's arm, he has actually extra scents for so that he can scent his tail to flirt with the ladies, which is what he's gonna do right now. <laughs> so that tail wag is a little bit of a flirting behavior, shows that he's excited to see Lulu and thinks that she's looking good today on this St. Patrick's Day. So to help these guys get a little bit encouraged to kind of inquire about this stuff, I'm gonna let Lulu go ahead and sniff at this so that she can see what it's like. Yeah. You like the smell, but you're unsure about the cup? Do you wanna try? <laughs> That's okay. What about Remy? Oh, he got it. <laughs> Good job, Remy. How was it? You have to come over here and get it. <laughs> so some other fun facts about these species while these guys are thinking about this. Now that Remy's had a taste, hopefully maybe he'll come over and kind of uh, forage some more. We'll see. Looks like he's actually getting comfortable. Some other things about the ring-tailed lemur is these guys are known as omnivorous foliovores. So that means that these guys are gonna mostly eat plant material, sometimes including dirt and roots of plants. Uh, they're also gonna be eating fruits, vegetables, sometimes small uh, reptiles like little lizards and other things like that, sometimes even small birds. 
if these guys need some extra protein. And they are actually an endangered species. That's why they live here at the Florida Aquarium as part of our animal ambassador team. Because the primate group of prosimians is actually the most endangered mammalian group on the planet. Out of the 113 species, over 90% of them are actually endangered or critically endangered. And so one of the best things that you guys can do to help preserve this species is actually just by uh, encouraging people who do want these guys as pets to not get them as pets. Because unfortunately, due to the illegal pet trade, there are more ring-tailed lemurs in the United States than there are in Madagascar. And these guys are very important in their native homeland because they are the pollinators for their species, just like bees and bats are for us. One of the other things that are causing these animals to decline is actually sapphire mining. Uh, sapphire mining uh, contributes to deforestation of these guys' homes since they do live in large forests uh, where they'll spend their days uh, socializing and foraging. So by uh, taking away that, uh, that home space for them, it is uh, creating a very small area for these guys to still be able to call home. So another thing that you guys can do to help these guys out is by getting gems that are lab grown instead of from uh, actual mining in Madagascar. <laughs> now I'm gonna go ahead and try to see if Lulu wants to get a little bit involved. I'm gonna show her a piece of food and see if she wants to come down here and investigate. Lulu, do you wanna come here? Here. Mm, sweet potatoes are one of her favorites. And I did put a little bit of the apple juice on the sweet potato as well. And now if you notice while her mouth was open, her teeth look quite different from what we have in our mouths. Uh, so these guys do have very sharp canines on their upper jaw to help these guys bite through uh, tree bark and roots and other things like that. But if you notice on her lower jaw, she had some very odd shaped teeth. This is actually known as the comb tooth. Lemurs and other prosimians don't take baths in water. Instead, these guys use their lower jaw to actually comb their fur. Uh, so this lower tooth is actually called the tooth comb. So they'll actually use it and groom through their fur. They'll also groom each other's fur as well. Maybe you'll see it a little bit better on Miss Annie while she's trying to figure out how she wants to eat that sweet potato best. So Alex, we have a question from Jessica. Sure. She says her nine-year-old daughter wants to know how many different species of lemurs there are. That's a great question. There are currently 113 different species of lemur and they are doing research and discovering more, it seems like every once in a while, every month or so. Remy, would you also like a piece of sweet potato? And we have a question from Kristen. How many teeth do lemurs have? If you consider the comb tooth as one whole tooth, I believe that they have around 40. Um, if you split each individual like tooth of the comb, it could be into uh, 45 or 50 teeth. Would you like to take another chance on the cup, Lulu? <laughs> Another question from Sarah, how much do lemurs eat? So it depends on the individual lemur um, and it depends on how good they are at hunting. Uh, but these guys are gonna be eating about 30% of their body weight every single day. Uh, they do have a fairly high metabolism. Uh, so they get hungry again after eating quite quickly. Uh, we feed our guys every two hours. All right, we have another question. Um, from Tiffany, how do you remember the difference between each lemur? That's my favorite question. Uh, so for Remy, um, he's the easiest to tell apart. Uh, so since he is the male, so you can actually see the black arm spur that I was mentioning earlier on the inside of his forearm. That black spot shows that he's a male because only males have those special glands. Uh, he also is our smallest lemur. Uh, so he is a, a little guy. 
Now for Lulu over here, she is our biggest lemur, even though she's our youngest. Um, you can also tell her apart from her mom. If you look at where the white meets the gray on her forehead, she has a little triangle that I call her widow's peak. And then last but not least, Miss Annie. Annie actually has the longest tail out of all three of our lemurs, and she's also missing a thumb on her right hand. Uh, this was from another facility. Uh, she came to us all healed and all okay and mobile and all of those kinds of things, but it's just a little quirk that's about her. So Maria says, my six-year-old Lily wants to know what their fur feels like. So their fur is soft, uh, but it isn't soft like a cat or a dog. It is a little bit drier since these guys don't have a lot of oils to make their hair silky. Uh, so it kind of feels like a wiry kind of dog. Charlene wants to know, do lemurs like to play in water? No, these guys actually avoid water uh, since water uh, can kind of uh, make their fur matte and get uncomfortable. That's actually why they've kept the adaptation of that comb tooth so they can take a bath without any water at all. And Katie Grace wants to know how much do the lemurs weigh? That's a great question. So we weigh our lemurs in kilograms. Uh, but if I roughly do the conversion in my head, Lulu weighs around seven pounds. Uh, Remy weighs around four and a half, and Annie weighs around five pounds. Brett wants to know how many hours a day do they sleep? Uh, these guys are going to be mostly asleep during the afternoon because their most active times are sunrise and sunset. Uh, so this species sleeps around six to eight hours a day, just like we do. No. <laughs> have to give these guys these cups more often so they aren't so worried about them. <laughs> Oliver wants to know what are the long tails used for? Their long tails are used for balance. So this species lives in very large forests, are very agile jumpers as well, but that tail helps them with keeping balance. You'll see that Annie's actually draping hers on a prop right now to help keep her more comfortable. That's also how these guys are able to climb around on these very thin ropes without worrying about falling over. Chris, uh, Chrissy wants to know from Caroline, what are their teeth made of? So their teeth are made of bone, just like ours are. So it's gonna be pretty much the same. It's just different shapes. And Lance wants to know the average lifespan of a lemur. So in the wild, these guys usually live anywhere from 10 to 12 years. In zoos and aquariums, they can live into their early to mid 20s. And we have another question from Holly. How old are the lemurs at the aquarium? So Lulu, the one that's eating right now, just turned seven on the 13th. Remy on the swing behind her is going to be turning 11 tomorrow. And then Annie is going to be turning 10 on the 21st. Greta wants to know, do they have opposable toes? So they do have a slightly opposable thumb on their bottom feet to kind of help them grab on. It's not quite as flexible as our human thumbs are, but it does help them grip on round props. And our buddy Porter wants to know how do lemurs, what do lemurs eat in the wild? So in the wild, these guys are going to be eating things like fruits, vegetables, and a lot of different types of plant material. All of the plants that are in the habitat for our lemurs are edible and they do kind of chew on them how they feel like it. Uh, they'll also opportunistically eat some forms of protein. Uh, so they will eat if um, in the wild or if we give them some bugs. Uh, sometimes in the wild, these guys will eat lizards, small frogs, small birds and stuff as well. And Leah wants to know, do you check their eyesight? I think this is a great opportunity to talk about the wellness we do with these guys. Absolutely. So all of our lemurs actually voluntarily participate in their wellness exams uh, the best that we can. 
Uh, so right now our lemurs are learning how to do a voluntary blood draw, voluntary x-rays, and then also these guys every single day allow us to do tactile. So I can actually um, ask Aunt, uh, Lulu here to grab onto a little carabiner. And if she does, that means she's consenting to allow me to touch her. So I can check her eyes, I can check her ears, I can check all over her body for cuts and scrapes. And as long as she's holding that carabiner, that means that she doesn't mind. Andrea wants to know how many babies can they have at one time? So ring-tailed lemurs are actually prone to having twins. Uh, these guys have a very small window uh, for the females to be able to get pregnant, actually only a couple of hours. Uh, so with me mentioning all of these guys' birthday being so close together, that's actually why. Uh, naturally in the wild, these guys would uh, actually be born on the opposite side of the year, usually August to September, and they'll usually have two babies once a year. Ryan and Blake want to know, who are their predators in the wild? So these guys have predators such as birds of prey. There's a lot of owls and other raptors uh, in Madagascar, especially on the southeastern side. There's also this very unique mammal called a fusa, uh, where they look almost like a weasel and a cat mixed together. Uh, they very, have very short legs and are very long, uh, but they will hunt these guys as well. Okay guys, so it looks like we are about to go ahead and wrap up our feeding session with our lemurs while they still try to figure out if they want this apple juice or not. Uh, but thank you guys so much for joining us for our first episode of C-SPAM. Uh, we are going to be joining Tom tomorrow as he sings some aqua tunes for the kids at home, which should be a great time. I hope you guys have an absolutely fantastic St. Patrick's Day.